I need some fortification to tell you what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> There was a development in the garden that I had to report on in my vlog. I'm taking a little break from my travel vlogs to tell you about what happened this week. Now you know that I am now using the Back to Eden garden method with wood chips and I have four to six inches of wood chips on my beds. But I noticed that three of my tomato plants wilted very quickly, like in three days they were wilted and shriveled up. And we dug them out and there were 30 to 50 grubs under each plant. These were all at the base of two tomato plants. I thought, now wait a minute, with wood chip mulching, you never disturb the surface, you let it break down and it turns into beautiful rich soil full of hyphae and you know, you've got your decomposers in there. My goodness, those are huge, huge and fat. That's fantastic. Wait, that's a worm, right? Yeah, put it inside. You never have to touch it and you never have to do any work. <laughs> so I wrote to my friend Jay Berenger at Garden of Odin edible foodscaping in Phoenix, Arizona. Be sure to watch that vlog with me and Jay. And told him about this and he said, too many grubs are not good. They can disturb the roots. Well, that's what happened. So I thought, good grief. You know, I probably got, there's no telling how many more grubs we have. There's complete infestation. And so the question is, what, does it have to do with the wood chips? Or did I just get unlucky? Wish we could get money for these. We'd get rich today. See? Collect it like gold. See? Yeah. What did we grow in the late bloomer garden this summer? Grubs! That's where I found the first bulk of uh, grubs. And he went over a little ways and then in the corner over there, it's a huge infestation of, yes, harvester ants. I was so grossed out, I thought, maybe it's time for chemicals. I mean, I, you know, this is impossible. So um, I went to the hardware store. We looked at all the options. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. And plus, the chemical I looked at didn't even kill. It said, it kills ants, except blah, 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 harvester ants. I'm going, well, if it doesn't kill harvester ants, that doesn't help. And it didn't list grubs, so that didn't help. So I am in the uh, market for finding a solution <clears throat> so this raised bed we call the back 40 it's about 50 square feet and i thought we had seen june bugs diving into this not many one here and there diving into the wood chips no doubt laying eggs and i thought this could be loaded too i could just be shooting myself in the foot to go ahead and plant my sweet peas in this. And so I had Eric dig this entire thing out. He sifted this dirt like he was making bread. Pushed all the wood chips back on one half, sifted it all down, pushed all the wood chips back to the other side, sifted it all down, and took out every grub to a foot down. Not everything has been done, just this and a couple of beds over here. We wound up with a five gallon bucket, four inches deep. Now that's a lot of grubs. I don't know what, 2,000 at least, I don't know. But right now, what I'm doing on this bed is I bought, it says it's clear, it's not really clear, it's kind of white plastic. You can kind of see through it. But I'm trying to solarize this soil 
So I'm starving it from water. I cut off the water and I'm not going to water this bed for a month. Now it would be better to do it for three months and then I could probably kill all the uh, powdery mildew spores that, that kill all my plants. <laughs> now we shall see. <laughs> if I see little, not little, huge, if I see huge green metallic June bugs pushing up to the surface and going, let me out, let me out, let me out, then I'll know that they're still hatching down there anyway. <laughs> Now I left this bucket, five gallon bucket, four inches deep of these grubs. I know it's really gross. If you, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this. I have, um, let's see, hold on, <laughs> um, 143 views. So 143 people out there that may be watching this has, have already seen my grubs, but, um, I left them in the bucket by the driveway and the sidewalk thinking that, okay, I, I just, I, I didn't have the guts to, uh, to pour bleach in there and just kill them all. And so, um, believe me, I thought about it. So I had this great idea. Well. <laughs> I thought, well, leave them for the wildlife. That's what they want anyway. In fact, today there is evidence of raccoon activity all around this raised bed. They're digging up the side looking for those grubs. So I thought, hey, I'll just serve them up a great meal right there by the driveway and the sidewalk. So I set the bucket there for three nights and there's digging all around, but let's go see if anything has happened to the grubs in the bucket. And you see, the raccoons were digging here last night. But let's look in the bucket. Wow. If they, I suppose they might've eaten a few. This, this looks like it's settled down a little bit. There's still tons in here. Now, Zachary, there's something really kind of gross in my garden right now. Would you like to see it? Yeah. What? Yeah. You'd like to see something gross? Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go. Okay. You. Come closer. They won't hurt you. Just stand right there. I'm going to show you. That's why I've got my glove on. Look. What are those? Those are worms. Not worms, they're grubs. They're like, they're like beetle larvae. Oh, here's a really big one. It's like a what? It's, a, it's like a roly-poly on a wheel. On wheels? Yeah. The larvae, known as crawly backs, because they propel using the stiff hairs on their backs, reach a length of two inches. At rest, they curl to a C shape. You don't want to hold it? No, it's too gross. <laughs> Unless I wear your gloves. You can wear my glove. Oh yeah. The larvae feed on manure and decaying matter, <laughs> but occasionally plant roots, like my tomatoes. With more home gardens, compost piles and organic mulch, their range has expanded since the 1960s. Just pick it up. <laughs> Actually, this is the fig eater beetle, also green fruit beetle or fig beetle. And it's a member of the scarab beetle family and its habitat is primarily the southwestern United States and Mexico. They're often mistaken for green June beetles, which are smaller and more destructive pests. They make a loud buzzing sound, probably because they don't have to open their elytra to fly. Their primary food has become ripe fruit with soft skins, like figs. Fortunately, they left my figs alone, but I used silk bags to protect them as a precaution. 
Adults emerge in late summer and early fall. They mate and females lay eggs in decaying matter, which is exactly what my wood chip mulch is. And when the larvae emerge, they burrow down up to a foot to spend the winter. In spring, they move back near the surface and pupate. This is the mud shell left over from pupation. The larva became a pupa inside here, and when the beetle metamorphosed, it broke out. I mean, I keep a tennis racket handy to knock the June bugs out of the sky, but I'm not always out here, you know? You know, I really appreciate you watching my vlog. I created the vlog to build audience for my channel so that you could get to know me a little bit better. And of course, I love sharing inspiring stories of other gardens and gardens in my vlog. My vlog is something that I can shoot and edit and create myself, so there's a much quicker um, turnaround for, for my videos. So I appreciate you sharing and giving me thumbs up and uh, get out of here. Go. Go get the grubs. That's what they're there for. You know, I should just, that's a crow on my chimney. Yeah. <laughs> I should just dump the grubs all out in the street and let the birds just whoosh. But then they'll know that my house is dinner time, you know? <laughs> anyway, um, thanks a lot for watching and um, the next vlog will be back to Sicily. <laughs>